I think why you're doing something always matters, right? So to the point, say you're going, you want a new partner because you're unhappy with your current. Odds are you have been around other companies on the show floor, asked, you've seen other people's work. You may not need to go to RFP. You may have two companies in the back of your mind already. And then I think it's just saying, okay, let's go do a little bit of research. We've seen their work on the floor. We've talked to other exhibitors who work with them and it becomes much more simpler. But if say, starting with why for somebody, their why is that they feel like they're not getting top tier design work and they are not being experiential enough in this space. That's a why, right? They're working with a partner that they feel like creatively can't get them to where they want to be or that there's more out there. And then B, they feel like experientially, they're not doing enough inside of this booth space. So for somebody there, that why now should drive the entire RFP in terms of who you're looking for, in terms of conversations you have. For example, if you start talking to companies and you end up never talking to a creative director, they're yeah. just talking to Molly, the AE, right? They're not talking to a creative director. Wouldn't you want to talk to a creative director if that's your biggest problem, if that's your headache, if that's why you're making a switch? So those are little details that if you have a why and you're focused on making change, which is what an RFP can bring, is you're then looking for certain elements when they say, hey, you know what? Let me get you on the phone with our creative director. Why don't you all talk? Why don't you have a conversation? Why don't you tell them where you're missing or what you're looking for and get their thoughts? Is there anything else outside of why that maybe you think somebody should be thinking about when they are going out to RFP? Yeah, I think it's knowing like your internal process too, right? Like once you have selected how many other people, right? You you got it. You're in the process with them talking about design. You've gone through that. So like, what does like your internal process look like internally? It's like once you get three or four designs back, what do you need to go do? And I think you need to understand this before you get all the bids out. So kind of starting from the backwards, right? Is it just you, no matter like if you're a specialist or an associate, right? Who else do you have to show? Who has to get these approvals, right? Sometimes I think it's fine if you're just working with like, say you're just working with an event manager, right? And they have like mm -hmm. an event director or a VP. We all understand like time is important. So not wasting too much time with people. So like, what does that process look like though? Like if your director needs to be involved and you're just going to show them four designs, take off the logos and they're going to choose which one is the best. For me, I just don't personally think that you're going to get the best results by doing that, right? So what mm -hmm. you just said is like, you know, you're vetting, you're doing all of this work and design. It's all about the process. Like you mentioned, who's taking you through what process? Yep. Like if your biggest pain point is need to be more experiential or you want something more eye-catching or whatever it is, it's very design focused. And two people had you with creative director on their call and two other companies didn't, the process is going to be different, right? Like you're going to gear be geared towards somebody. I think design can be very subjective, right? One person could like one thing, the other person doesn't like yeah. one thing. But I also think you need to come forth and say, hey, that's great. We can choose from these designs, but like I like one the best because of the communication and the touch points and references, the pictures that they've yeah. sent me. Yeah. There's a lot more that comes from it with design and going back and talking them through, hey, we like somebody else's design, but we really like you guys. Like you could eventually get there if they're a pretty good company. They should have a good creative team. They can get you to what you need to. You just have to talk through it with them. So that's one of my other things, like a big internal, how are you going about it? Make sure that you feel comfortable. I mean, you know, it's pretty much like the event marketers, you know, ass on the line at the end of the day. So yeah. make sure that you're choosing the right company that you feel comfortable with that can deliver and produce and not honestly solely just choosing on design because design can be changed. I think like three things that you touched on there, Rick. One is know your internal process, talk to your stakeholders. Two, you should allow these companies to take you through a process, not you take them through a process and make them dance to give you something where you go make a decision on. And the committee by design is a, I mean, the committee choosing is very difficult. It's subjective. And I think it eliminates what really matters when you're looking for a good partner and you're trying to get your, your problem solved. It becomes impersonal as well. And I don't think it really hits the nail on the head.